All right, we're going to do another motorcycle uh, vlog thing, whatever you want to call it here. Uh, unfortunately, the audio that I originally recorded while riding um, was ruined because of some technical problems and things. It, it just I didn't have the settings right, and so it didn't come out. So I'm, I'm going to have to do a voiceover on this. And uh, sorry about that, but uh, I'm going to talk here about my advice to young men. Uh, another way to say this would be what I would change about my life if I could go back in time uh, to you know my late teens, early twenties, uh, things that I would do differently, and even not even late teens, but uh, you know in my teenage years and then going up through my twenties, what would I change? What what uh, advice would I give to a young man? I actually had this question the one time a young man asked me, and uh, it's crossing Route One there in uh, not too far from where we're at. And again, heading north on the ITS trail, and uh, a lot of mud puddles there. I'm not going to say like last time, you know, I said that about uh, being baptized, and I went right into a big mud puddle. But uh, if you've seen the last one, <laughs> so. But um, just head north here on my motorcycle. Just took it out for a ride, and um, just wanted to talk about some of these things. So, first piece of advice that I would have, obviously would be to study the Bible more. Uh, unfortunately, most of my teenage years, uh, throughout my teenage years, I was using the NIV. I got one when I was 10 years old, and um, that was the Bible that I had. Not, I hate to even call the thing a Bible, really, but that was the Bible that I had, and I really couldn't relate to it or anything else, and, and um, I just didn't really study the Bible. I really could care could have cared less. I mean, I basically was an atheist. I, I believed in God and whatever, but in practice, I was I just acted like God didn't exist. And and um, you know, I would have never professed to be an atheist at that time. But my point being, I really didn't think about God. I lived without any reference to the Bible at all. The Bible to me was just a dead book, and religion was just something I wanted to get away from. And um, you know, I, I really didn't start learning about the Bible till I was, you know, 25, going into my 26th year when I got saved, and I started to, you know, think about the Bible, and um, <clears throat> that's something that I regret now. Uh, of course, the Lord really helped me to learn a lot of Scripture and a lot of truth, in you know, after I got saved and everything. But uh, my advice to you, if you're a young man, if you're in your teens, uh, study the Bible. That's a that's certainly the most important thing that you can do. Um, but uh, one thing I will say is uh, study the Bible, but don't even think about full time ministry. Uh, you're not ready for it. You know the the Bible talks about the, the, not a novice. You know one of the qualifications for a bishop. Um, you're a novice as a young man, and you say, well, brother, well, let me let me just give you something to think about. Why did the Lord Jesus Christ wait until he was 30 years old to enter into his ministry, his earthly ministry? I mean, he was truth personified. Why on earth wait for so long? And he certainly had the abilities to really understand Scripture and everything. I mean, he's the living word, and then you have the written word, the, the word of God itself. But uh, he went in there to the synagogue at one point when he was you know, a young boy, and he was asking the doctors questions and things, and, and they were just astonished, you know, at, at how well he knew the Scriptures. So the point I'm trying to make here is Jesus certainly had the ability to be in full-time ministry as a young man, certainly in his teens and his young, you know, his, his, uh, and when he turned 20 years old, he could certainly could have gone into the ministry. He could have gone to any synagogue out there, any kind of a, a seminary, what, whatever would have been the equivalent of a seminary back in his day, he certainly could have gone, and there would have been no problem. He could have, you know, gotten straight A's in all of his classes. Why didn't he? Why didn't he? Why did he work as a carpenter for the first 30 years of his life? I mean, you think about something that you would consider to be just a waste of time, you know, and it's something that we all struggle with because you think to yourself, well, the catching up is going to happen here soon, and, and you say, well, then why on earth would I just get a job and go out and work in construction or work in, you know, electronics, uh, work for an electrician or something, or, you know, what a waste of time. Well, Jesus Christ spent 30 years in doing carpentry. 
and in a three and a half year ministry before he was crucified, went back up to heaven. Uh, it's an interesting thing. What, why did he do that? Well, he was trying to show a pattern there for young men, young men today, uh, young men throughout the church age, I should say it that way. Uh, the Lord did that, I believe, to show you that uh, you really need to just go out and work um, different types of, of jobs um, before you go into full-time ministry. You need to get some real experience. And I can look back and I can say a lot of my character that I have today, there's a big mud puddle, <laughs> a lot of my character that I have today came from a lot of the, the jobs that I had over the years. And uh, that's not need, leads me to the second point, and that is you need to develop a good work ethic. Uh, without a good work ethic that comes from working at various jobs over the years, uh, you're not going to make it too good in preaching. Uh, there's a lot of hard th things that will come up in preaching and in, and in ministry. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it can be rough at times. And if you don't have a good work ethic, uh, you're, gonna, you're not going to make it too good. And let me just say, by the way, when I say no full-time ministry until you're 30, at least 30, uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't witness. I'm not saying you shouldn't, uh, if, you're, if you have a YouTube channel, you shouldn't make a video or two or whatever else. I'm saying full-time ministry, where that's what you're doing. Um, the Lord, I don't think the Lord's going to call you. Not, I don't think. I know the Lord's not going to call a young man in his teens. And uh, here comes some four-wheelers. Watch out for that. It was a Saturday when I was riding here, so a uh, bunch of people on the ATV trail, you'll see that as I'm riding along. But... Um, you need to have that good work ethic, and you can certainly witness some things through that, and you, you're going to get a lot of experience there, too. You know, going back and forth on YouTube is fine, but uh, witnessing on the job site and witnessing the people that you run into and whatever else, again, you're going to learn a lot about uh, how people reject the Lord. You're going to learn about false converts. You're going to learn a lot, a lot of things out there and how to balance working with people, with witnessing to them and, and whatever else. It's, it's just... I believe firmly that it's what the Lord wants, and that's why He did that, why He showed us an example in Himself that He worked for 30 years before starting His earthly ministry. Okay, uh, the third point I want to raise, a uh, thing that I, that I did, I, I uh, did not do the first one. I didn't study the Bible as a young man, but I did develop a good work ethic. Uh, worked a lot of hours and things, and and you can watch my work testimony if you want to know all the details. But I worked a lot of different jobs. And, um, but the, the third thing that I did, and I'm thankful that I did this, is I avoided colleges and universities. Uh, they are a scam. I mean, unless you have some specialized thing or whatever else that you really need to get that training, uh, some kind of medical thing and whatever, which would, you know, uh, whatever else, and I would avoid the medical establishment like a plague. Um, it's... I could say a whole lot about that, but the whole point is um, the whole university thing is another one of the big scams that's out there. You go out and they tell you, well, you have to get a college degree to be successful in life, and, oh, you'll just be able to make so much money, and without it, you won't ever get anywhere. And yet you study a lot of the millionaires, a lot of the big uh, wealthy men of the past. They had no college education. A good example of that would be the man who invented um, Hershey chocolate. Milton Hershey, I think his name was. Uh, actually, he was a friend of my grandfather, uh, Milton Denlinger. So, um, I think his name was Milton Hershey, but uh, the guy that came, came up with Hershey chocolate, um, he, was, he had no college education, no formal education. And uh, so, but today, you have so many young, young people... You know, and back years ago, I'll say this, back years ago in the 1970s or so, you could go and you could go to some university somewhere and you could get a part-time job while going to school and you could pay off your college debt. That's not the case anymore. And I know of people that are in professional fields, so to speak, and they still have a college debt to pay off, you know, 10, 20 years later. Um, it's crazy. I have told this story before. I knew a, a young woman that went off to some college someplace and she got a degree in art and $70,000 debt and she couldn't find a job. $70,000 debt. So that's why I would say avoid the college and university thing at all costs. And while I'm on that subject of, you know, 
similar thing here, and that's avoid debt. Try to stay out of debt. Don't go out and get a big brand new truck because you're just working some job or whatever else. Be real careful about that. Again, I've had a lot of older vehicles over the years and learned to work on the vehicles and um, you save yourself money and you again you're building that character. You're understanding how things work and whatever else and that those things will uh, help you in your years of ministry. Um, and another thing, the fourth point here, and that is to work at a tough job that requires hard physical labor or do some work on your own. I got into logging on my own. I didn't work for anybody, but um, I did some logging work. I did some tree work for people. I'd go you know, cut problem trees down, or if they had a tree come down in a storm, I'd go cut it up for them. I had a truck. I'd haul the wood away and, and whatever else. I did that for a while. I did some uh, firewood sales. And, uh, you know, again, you say, what's, what's that all about? What's the hard physical labor thing? Well, the Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 9, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Um, that's true. That's absolutely true. A good way to fight lust, if you have a problem with pornography, which a lot of young men do, I know that as a fact, uh, one of the good ways to fight against the lust of the, you know, getting into lust and things with pornography is to take heed according to God's word. Start reading God's word. Put an Alexander Scorby recording on of the Bible being read. That's a good way to get away from the lust of pornography. But I'll tell you, there's another way to do it, and that is hard physical labor. Um, when you're out and you're pushing your body to the limit, be it with logging or with construction work or any kind of really hard, you know, farm work or things like that, they're not going to have much time to lust. Okay, it's a great way to put the flesh down, and you know, get yourself in really good shape, really good physical shape and keep your mind very you know, clear and very clean because you don't have time to lust. Um, that's another thing I would highly recommend. Uh, young men, I, I will be quite frank with you here, um, I would avoid any kind of office work if you're a young man. Uh, you get into office work and things, you say, well, I want to make more money. Okay, but I... You know, you get into that type of thing, especially where you're around computers all the time, that temptation is going to be almost impossible to overcome. You know, you get out in, in some kind of a hard, you know, outdoors type of a job, uh, it's going to build a lot of character in you, and it's going to keep you away from lust. All right, very important there. Um, the next one's a big one, okay? I did, let's see here, study the Bible, didn't do that. Develop a good work ethic, I did that, avoid uh, colleges and universities, I did that. I got that one right. Uh, work at a tough job that requires hard physical labor, did that one too. The next one, this one I was very guilty of. Uh, I was definitely doing this, or, or I shouldn't say, I should say not doing this, and that is avoiding junk food and eating healthy. Okay, in other words, avoid junk food and eat healthy. Um, I did not do that as far as. Uh, you know, I went right to junk food. I was a junk food addict. And you say, well, brother, that's, that's not that big of a deal. Oh, uh, in your in your teens, in your 20s, your body can recover very well because you're young and everything. And, and uh, you can eat a lot of junk food. And, you're, and it won't, you know, kind of make you, you have the sugar high and the sugar low. And, and, you know, you might get some headaches and whatever else. But let me tell you something. Um, that stuff will add up. It accumulates. And uh, there's a lot of toxicity, and it will bioaccumulate in your body. In other words, it will just add up and add up and add up. And when you hit about 30 years old, you're going to start to feel the effects of that. And I can speak from experience. Uh, the thing that got me into natural health was I was at a crisis point in my life <laughs> with my health. My health was just totally falling apart. And I was just massive, just really bad migraine headaches and just sick and I'd get a cold and I'd be sick for a week and it was, you know, just a common cold, you know, it was bad. It was really, really bad. And uh, since I've been into natural health now, um, it's just amazing how good you can actually feel. You don't have to live, you know, feeling just awful. And um, your, your body does have the ability to heal itself. Uh, it and self-regulate, uh, so you can bring your health back. But my point is, um, if you're just, if you destroy your health, there's going to be some some 
major, you know, you're gonna have a lot more work to do to bring your, yourself back into good health again. And uh, it's taken years and years and years for me to get back into a point of good health. I mean, I used to, I was telling my wife, we got on this subject and I told her, I said, I, there was this uh, candy store at a shopping mall near uh, Lancaster City and this candy store was called Help Yourself. And you would go in there and they had these, these you know, bins of candy or bins of whatever, you know, uh, nuts of different types and chocolate and whatever. And you go in there and they had these scoops, you know. And I'd get, I'd say probably anywhere from three to five pounds of, of jelly beans. And uh, I'd go home and I'd sit there and I'd play video games for hours and just eat jelly beans. You know, I'd go through a pound or two a day. And just terrible. I look back at that now and I think, my word, there was nothing in those jelly beans that was doing my health any good. Not a thing. And uh, soda pop, I drank soda pop. I drank uh, Dr. Pepper and I drank a lot of that stuff. Just junk food, junk food, junk food. And uh, this is in the town of Mars Hill here. There's You can see a lot of the potato trucks. This is a big potato facility. The ATV trail goes right through it. That's a orange potato truck right there. That orange back to it there. I don't mean orange potatoes, you know, you know what I mean, but, uh, but uh, potato uh, farming is a real big thing in Aroostook County here in northern Maine, but, um, and it's, it is actually called Mars Hill, you know, and Paul wasn't preaching, this isn't where Paul pre preached to the, you know, Athenians or anything, so just had to put that in there, but uh, avoiding junk food, you know, that's actually one of the big things advice that I can give to you as a young man. Um, get your health fixed up uh, as a young man. And it's not effeminate, it's not sissy to eat healthy. I know that there's a stigma there and you think, oh, I'm just gonna eat junk food and, and I think it's funny and whatever else. You won't think it's funny when you get older. And uh, if you mess around long enough, you mess around into your 30s, you're gonna start to come down with things like diabetes and poss possibly even cancer. Again, I've known young men that, that got cancer, and they hit their, in their late 20s, early 30s, they start getting cancer. And you look at how they lived and, and what they ate and everything else, and they just messed around for years and years. Uh, it's a bad idea. And um, just to say this, you know, another thing, and, and that is uh, I have a son, for those of you that, that don't know about that, and uh, he's four years old, and he's never had candy. We don't give him candy. Um, he's all, always had natural health type of food, including uh, superfoods, they're called, um, which are tropical foods a lot of times that are, that are dried and ground into powders, and then you can put the powders into different um, foods and recipes and whatever else. And they're just packed with all different types of nutrients and whatever else. And, and uh, my son, in, in his entire four years of life, um, has never been sick, not once. And, uh, you know, I, I give the credit, you know, mostly to the Lord on that, but it's, it's also related to nutrition. And um, the other a couple days ago, um, we had a, have a little wagon that we can haul stuff around in and things. And, and I sat in the wagon and my son pulled me around in the wagon on uh, flat ground. We weren't going downhill, in other words. And, you know, my son, he weighs about right around 35 pounds and he pulled his dad me and I weigh about 220 pounds so just incredible strength that my son has and why well because we keep candy away from him. he's never he doesn't even know what soda pop tastes like and um, again if I, I look back at my past and I think how much healthier could I have been how many times uh, did I was I struggling with lust because my my flesh was so weak because of what I was eating it's terrible and don't think for one second that, oh, well, you know, lust doesn't have anything to do with your nutrition. Oh, yeah, it does. Oop, look out. UTV going by. But uh, uh, you need to be in good health. And I'll tell you something. It will show you uh, how God has created things in nature um, and how your body can respond to it. It's, it's absolutely fascinating. Uh, that's, that's another one of the big cells for me. I mean, you... you you know, so many times I'll read about some kind of a superfood or some kind of thing. Boy, this is really healthy for you, and it, it'll fix up your if you're having some digestion issues or if you're having some sleep problems or headaches or whatever else. And I try it, and you know, it's amazing how your body will react to things that God creates out in nature. I mean, just riding right here on this trail, 
there's so much stuff right around me there um, that's just so incredibly healthy. Uh, this is when I was riding here. This was uh, late September, and um, and so most of the apples are off, but uh, there's wild apple trees all through northern Maine, and um, we would make applesauce with them and, and things. We have apple trees on our own property, but, I mean, nobody even picks them up here. And, you know, you can, you can check into some of the stuff that apples, wild apples do and stuff for you. And I mean, there'd be times I'd, I'd start to feel like I'm coming out with some kind of little bit of sickness, and I'd make some applesauce with uh, some superfood powders put in it and a little bit of plain yogurt and and boy just any sickness I was starting to come down with just gone and um, just rarely ever even get sick anymore and uh, I get some spiritual attacks and things but just plain sickness from whatever rare very very rare and I used to deal with headaches all the time like I said since I've detoxed and just um, eaten right and everything else it's rare I even get headaches anymore. Uh, and, you know, there's an old saying, I forget, some guy said it, and he said, let food be your medicine. And I'll tell you what, when you think about it from that angle, you know, then the old saying, you are what you eat. Um, <laughs> think about that. What you're putting in your body is becoming you. I mean, if you're eating jelly beans, and, and it's jelly beans are made out of um, coal tar dyes, food coloring, in other words, and high fructose corn syrup and, and a few other things. I mean, it's terrible. I used to eat uh, ice cream and I'd put the little collared sprinkles on it. Those collared sprinkles are, are again, coal tar dyes. They're, they're just toxic. And um, carnauba wax, which I used to put on, you know, wooden things when I was a woodworker. And, uh, you know, just horrible. And it was leading to all kinds of problems, you know, health wise and things. Yeah, there's a lot of food out there, brethren, that you just, it is, it's going to slow you down and uh, just mess you up. So my advice there, avoid junk food like the plague. Get your health, you know, figured out. And uh, you, again, you know, uh, going and working out at a gym or whatever else, well, uh, that's, that's fine and everything. But uh, you get a good physical hard labor type of job where you're working really hard. I'm sure the Lord Jesus Christ was... Uh, no stranger to hard work, uh, working as a carpenter for 30 years. And, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be surprised the kind of shape that you can get into and, and just the, the overall good health when you eat right and um, get good sleep, too. Again, you know, you say, oh, brother, this stuff's funny and whatever. Yeah, you're not going to think so. And, you know, when you hit 30 years old, all of a sudden you're that... You know, poor health habits and things. Of course, drugs and alcohol don't even go near that stuff. But, you know, you, you mess up your life in your 20s, late teens and 20s and things, and you will pay for it when you hit 30. It'll catch up to you. And so my advice to, to young men out there is get your health figured out, okay? Start eating right, and you'll be surprised at uh, the kind of natural health that uh, the Lord um, has for you out here in nature like this, where I'm riding here, crossing that bridge there. Um, this trail system goes the whole way through northern Maine. People come from all over the country, and some even from other countries, to come here and ride this in the wintertime um, on snow sleds. So, But anyways, getting back to the list here. Um, another thing, and that is my advice to young men. Uh, my advice is to, to get rid of video games, and worldly entertainment. And, you know, I've had people ask me, they say, well, brother, is it a sin to play video games? Uh, no, it's not a sin to play video games, but are the video games expedient? Are they going to help you in your life as a Christian? Um, and another little thing that you can think about, the Bible talks about asking for the old paths, going back to the old ways and things, and learning from the old ways. Um, would a man back in the 1800s be impressed with your video game, you know, capabilities? Uh, they'd look at you as a loser. And that used to kind of convict me. And I'd think, you know, does it, do real men sit down and play video games? Video games, uh, you know, I, I again, I've spent, you know, many thousands of hours playing video games. And that's a lot of lost time. If I could go back and do it all over again, I would have quit playing video games long before I did. 
Uh, I actually didn't stop playing video games till um, I was in my 30s, and I was very, very much addicted to them. I mean, I grew up with that. So, as far as worldly entertainment is concerned, movies and things like that, and, and secular music, again, is it helping you in your walk? You know, it's, it's not. I'll tell you that. It's not going to make you a stronger Christian. Uh, and you say, well, what can I do? Well, what am I doing in this video? You say, well, brother, I can't afford a motorcycle. This thing was a, was a very cheap bike. You know, again, if you're learning to uh, fix things and work on things, you can pick up a motorcycle for a few hundred dollars, a dirt bike or something like that, or, you know, whatever. Learn how to work on them. Learn how to fix them. You know, I mean, since, since I was a boy, I have, I have been buying and selling motorcycles. I mean, I, I bought my first uh, dirt bike, I think, when I was about 12 or 13 years old. started riding when I was 10 on my brother's uh, dirt bike and then saved up to get my own. And I've been buying and selling bikes longer than I was even able to drive on the road. And it's always been sort of a side income thing type, type of deal for me. But, um, you know, this is more thrilling. Going out and riding like this is a lot more thrilling than, uh, than playing some video game. I'll tell you that. And uh, a lot better for you, too. But, you know, worldly entertainment, you know, get away from movies. I mean... Movies, I'll, I'll say this too, another thing about movies that's really bad and a lot of people don't think about is that movies actually, actually make you passive. What's happening is you're sitting there watching people getting shot at and killed and bad things happening in the movie and you're just sitting there watching it as entertainment. I mean, I, I remember hearing back in uh, World War II, I think it was, or maybe it was World War I, that they had a terrible time uh, training young men to go out and kill why? Well, they weren't used to seeing it. It was something new to them. They they were shocked by you know killing and whatever. Uh, not so anymore. Uh, young men today are raised with killing through video games, killing just watching it all the time as entertainment. It's really a problem. It's really a bad thing. Again, uh, as a young man, you want to do something for the Lord. You want to have a, a great life. Get away from worldly uh, entertainment. And worldly music, again, bad stuff. Um, and you don't have to, you know, be a dirt biker or whatever else. There's plenty of other things that you can do. I mean, there's, there's uh, you know, mountain biking. and I mean, mountain biking is even cheaper than dirt biking. And it uh, doesn't take as much to work on them or whatever else. You know, there's, there's just so much that you can do. And that's what I recommend. Uh, finally, the last piece of advice I'd like to give you as a young man, is, for goodness sake, <laughs> wait for the right woman to come along. Um, there's so much pressure on you to, to you know, have a relationship and, and get married and, and uh, you know, something's wrong with you if you don't have a girlfriend or whatever else. Just wait for the right, uh, right girl. That's interesting. There's trucks going there. There's, that's actually uh, crates of broccoli on the back of there. And a few years before, a few years ago, I should say it that way, um, that farm that they're getting the broccoli from, they actually had a moose come in, and that moose ate 40 acres of broccoli. <laughs> That's a lot of broccoli. I wouldn't want to be, you know, standing near him if he had, you know, gas problems from all that broccoli. But anyways, uh, but, uh, you know, waiting, waiting for the right woman, God might, God might not bring you a, a wife when you're 21 years old or 18 years old or 19 years old or whatever else. Um, God might have you wait for a while, especially if you have a real heart for ministry and you really want to do something for the Lord. Um, the Lord's going to teach you some things. And uh, a lot of people rush right into marriage and, and you know, uh, it's not, not really that good of an idea, especially because of peer pressure. That's really a bad idea, you know, that you're getting married because everybody else is or whatever else. And again, if you're doing the right things, you're not going to have the real strong, overpowering lust issues. Uh, I will guarantee you that. Um, when you start to have the lust issues, it's because you don't have much to do and you're sitting there in front of the computer and you just got done eating a bunch of candy. And, you know, because I, I, I'm, I'm telling you from experience. And you're, you know, 
playing video games or whatever else and the mind starts to wander or, you know I mean there's so many subliminal messages and things out there with movies and even on the internet there's just scantily clad women all the time advertising anything you can imagine um, I just I can't recommend the thing enough of just get out into the woods and, and or get out into you know go work at a farm or whatever else and, and don't worry about the Oh, but brother, that you just don't make much money. I could make a lot more money, at, you know, doing what. Brethren, money's not the should not be the the main thing for you, uh, the main goal for your life. All right, uh, not messing yourself up. That's a lot more important. And I'll tell you right now, I've known a lot of young men that go off and get really good, high-paying jobs, um, executive-type positions in businesses, and they get really messed up. There's some good-looking woman in the office there, and, you know, she's kind of flirty and whatever else. And Yep, mm-hmm. I've done a lot that way. And yet you get some guy, and he's out there and, and working in the fields or working in the forest or working in a construction job or whatever. Yeah, you're going to deal with some dirty co-workers and whatever else, but when it comes down to it, you're going to be working hard. And... Um, and you're, you're still going to have to fight lust, absolutely, but you're going to have an easier time doing it. And like I said, you get your nutrition figured out. You know, a lot of people don't think that that's a very important thing. It's like, oh, well, yeah, you know, I probably should eat better. Um, you need to eat good. All right, you're not taking care of the body that God has given you if you're eating a bunch of junk food all the time. Uh, it's really a bad situation. You know, again, I can say that that's probably one of the biggest things that has just changed my life is the proper nutrition and um, you know oh, it's, it's such a sissy thing to eat good food and whatever I'm not talking about becoming a vegetarian okay um, I eat very little in terms of vegetables uh, there's some that I eat and whatever else I eat more fruit than I do vegetables uh, we eat a lot of meat um, grass-fed meat and things like that stuff without antibiotics in it uh, again that's a whole issue there um, but, you know, this is just my advice to you. There's some grouse, I think that was, on the trail there. Uh, before real long, I think there's some guys on dirt bikes that come the other way or something, if I remember correctly. Another bridge. So, uh, well, that's pr pretty much going to be it as far as this video is concerned. Um, you know, the Bible says that you're to forget those things which are behind, you know, and, uh, and you will, you'll forget a lot of the mistakes that you've made and things, but I'll tell you, the one reason to remember some of them is so that you don't make those same mistakes in the future. And, uh, I can tell you again that, you know, a lot of the things that I had to get rid of in my past, um, it's stuff that I'll still, it'll still come to my mind and still kind of struggle with occasionally and, and you know go through the junk food area and I think oh boy should you get some of that junk food and I think yeah and what good is it you know what is this soda pop I mean there's there's nothing good in soda pop you know maybe a little bit of, of you know water or something that's in it somewhere I guess but you know that's well, probably not even that I mean it's just it's terrible and uh, like I said you know you might not think that that's a big deal but I will tell you from experience, you get up in into your 30s and things. I'm 43 years old now, and um, I will tell you right now that uh, I would not be in ministry today if it was not for uh, nutrition, proper nutrition. Uh, certainly there's the spiritual there. Obviously the Lord helps me in ministry, but uh, if I was eating junk food, the way, you know, there's been times I've I've kind of slipped up and I buy a donut or something like that or some other kind of junk food and I'll eat it and I'll just get just feeling sick and just feeling down and whatever else. You let your flesh down at all when you get into full-time ministry and the devils will just attack you, just, you know, beat you up tremendously. And uh, that's why I say nutrition is very important. And... So, but that's my advice to you, just to go over it again, you know, study the Bible.
but avoid full-time ministry, to avoid the temptation to get into full-time ministry. Um, I think it's very important for young men to develop a good work ethic as far as secular work. The Lord Jesus Christ did it until he was 30 years old. Um, you really have no reason to be getting into full-time ministry as a young man. It's very dangerous. Um, number two, of course, like I said, develop a good work ethic. Number three, avoid colleges and universities and debt in general. Uh, you start getting into debt, you, you start to become an you know, uh, indentured slave, essentially. Um, number four, work at a tough job that requires hard physical labor. Again, very important. If you can do that, get a job of some kind that where you're outside especially. Uh, you won't need to go to a gym because your job is going to be the gym. Uh, you're going to be in good shape because of the kind of work that you do. Um, I can tell you, back when I was a teenager, I wanted so badly to gain weight. I was six foot four and 150 pounds. <laughs> I was. People called me Bean Pole. I, you know, a, a job that I worked at. The boss called me Gumby. You know, thanks a lot. <laughs> but uh, I could not gain weight, and I tried. I my brother had a, a you know the whole weight bench thing and whatever else, and I tried working out and everything, and and I just you know I I do everything I could to to gain weight. And just could not gain weight. There's the dirt bikes. And um, Kawasaki and a Honda. But anyways, I was trying so hard to look, to gain weight. And I just kept losing weight. But I got into logging and uh, doing firewood. And I gained a lot of strength, a lot of muscle coordination. Just incredible. And I, I wish I could go back and, and you know have good nutrition along with that. I'm sure I'd have been you know, a lot healthier. So, working a tough job is a good thing. It'll help you fight lust as well. Um, avoiding junk food and eating healthy. Again, very, very important. I can't stress that enough. Getting rid of video games and worldly entertainment. If it's not helping you in your walk with the Lord, if it's not helping you to be a man, then get rid of it. That's my advice on that. And lastly, wait for the right woman. The wrong woman can mess you up for the rest of your life. Uh, wait for the right woman. So... That's my advice to you, to young men out there. Um, a lot of things I would have changed about my past, and some things I wouldn't have. Um, I'm just thankful the Lord saved me, and I'm thankful to be in ministry. So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.